welcome to Relate Higher, a podcast dedicated to providing the leading standard in conscious higher relating and to teaching you a conscious framework for all of your relationships. This is your go-to resource for developing meaningful, conscious relationships across your life. I'm your host, award-winning relationship coach and consultant and former family lawyer, Letitia Ringe. I'm so glad you're here. Welcome back to the podcast. Today is part two of our two-part series on the 12 conscious relationship principles. In the previous episode, we went through part one, which were the first six conscious relationship principles. These are the principles that work in building conscious, healthy, secure, successful relationships across your life. When you embody these principles, all 12 of them, as well as the first six we went through in the previous episode, you will see huge changes in your enjoyment of your relationships and also in the success that you experience because these principles are really helping you to not only enhance your connection with other people, but also increase your consciousness. And that is what the ultimate goal of all of our lives is, is to be more aware, more conscious, more intentional, more loving with the way we're living our lives. And this is what is available to all of us in every single moment, whether we are aware of it or not. That is really the truth of our existence. All of our fears, all of our protective patterns, all of our doubt, all of the ways we close off to love, to connection. This all comes from made up stories that we have been conditioned to believe through our body and our mind throughout our lifetimes and through stepping into conscious higher relating, you get to go back to your truth, which was, as you can imagine, when you were born as a little baby, you were so open to love. You were so innocent. There was no need for protection. You were there innocently taking in everyone who came into your life. And we want to get back to a place that is very similar to that state with healthy boundaries, of course. And that's what these principles are also helping you to create healthy boundaries that come from a place of love for yourself, as well as love and respect of the other people in your life. So without further ado, let's talk about the final six in our 12 conscious relationship principles. As a quick summary, the first six principles I shared in the previous episode were as follows. Conscious relationships support both you and the other person in the relationship with your personal development. That is really the point through being in conscious relationship with each other. You become a mirror to each other and you hold a perspective for the other person that they're unable to see just on their own. You also provide a an environment of security, which allows us to take greater risks, which allows us to more deeply know and understand ourselves. And so our relationships become a container for our personal development. Secondly, our relationships also become a place where we practice radical honesty with ourselves and with the other people we're relating to. This is so powerful because the more honest you are with yourself and with others, you're able to actually relate from a place of authenticity. And this is what we are all deeply desiring. When we desire to feel more seen and heard and deeply known, radical honesty is the way we get there. And that is what a conscious relationship is enabling. You will learn how to meet truth in a given moment and allow deeper truths to be revealed. Because when we're honest about how we're feeling, what needs to be expressed in a given moment, this allows us to access deeper truths within us. Now, the third principle was that a relationship, a conscious relationship also allows both parties to lean into seeking to understand 
both themselves and the other person. So in every moment, we're asking ourselves, am I leaning in and seeking to understand myself and this other person here? Or am I judging? Am I seeking to respond, to convince? Am I seeking to assume? Instead, we're learning how to be innocent. We're learning how to meet ourselves and the other person from this state of innocence so that we can receive the honesty that is being expressed in that moment, which allows the fourth principle, which is about feeling seen and witnessed. Or you might refer to this as seen and heard. One of the top desires in relationships across friendship, family, professional relationships, and of course, romantic relationships is that we want to feel more seen and known by the other person in the relationship. When you are using your relationship as a space for both you and your partner to grow and evolve and transform and get to know yourselves, when you're being radically honest, when you're leaning in and seeking to understand, you will feel more seen and heard by yourself and by the other person. And so that requires you to lean out and abandon some of the protective patterns that you have been so conditioned to operate in in the context of relating that you've been using throughout your lifetime and are the very reasons why you're not feeling seen and heard in your relationships. My number one goal in what we share here on Relate Higher is that we're really helping you to feel seen and heard in your relationships and that you step out of your own way. And that's why we have our Relate Higher framework for conscious relating. Okay, the fifth principle was that you then allow deeper truths to be revealed. So through embodying those first four principles, you will allow yourself to become aware of deeper truths that you're not even aware of right now. And that wouldn't be known to you if you were not in the context of conscious relating, because when you're in relationship with another person, it expands your perspective of yourself. You learn from each other, you're more clearly able to see yourself. And through the process of expressing and being witnessed by another person in that expression, you will access deeper truths within you. And you'll wonder, I didn't even know that this was something that I desired or didn't know that this is what I truly felt or wanted here. And it's only been made possible because of that conscious relationship, which by the way, is what every coaching relationship is giving you. Now, the sixth and final principle we talked about was that a connection is created and not found. So we typically think that connection is something that is found through connecting with the right people, those perhaps who have the capacity to be in a conscious relationship. And yes, of course, you're going to experience more connection with those people, but only because of the skills. Connection is a skill, and this is something you have to learn how to build within your life. And that is why education is so key. And that is why at Relate Higher, our mission is to provide you with not only conscious relationship coaching so that we give you that space to experience being in conscious relationship, but you also are given the tools and the skills, including the processes to create connection and to be in conscious relationship. Okay, let me now introduce to you our final six conscious relationship principles. Conscious relationship principle number seven is that a conscious relationship becomes a space for you to move closer to unconditional love. Now, the truth is that all of us are lovable, all of us are worthy, and love in its truest form is unconditional. So no matter what we do, no matter how we behave, no matter how many mistakes we make, no matter where we're at along our personal development journey, no matter where we are right now in our relationships, we are all completely lovable. And so is every single person you're relating with, no matter what they're doing right now. You're lovable, they are lovable, and we want to embody this unconditional love rather than only relating with people with strings attached to our love. I will love you if you behave in this specific way. I will love you if you do this specific thing. In coaching, we call this a manual. So we give people a manual. We rarely tell them what's in the manual. And if they don't meet the way that we want them to interact with us, then what we do is we withhold our love. 
But the truth is when you withhold love, the other person is going to react to that dynamic. They will withhold their love too. You'll both be reacting from a place of fear. You'll both be reacting from a place of protection. You're closed off to love. And so you will not create and connect from love. This is so silly when what we want is more meaningful connection, deeper intimacy, people who are open to relationship, who are going to see and hear you. You have to be open. You have to come from that place of innocence of the child who loves without condition. Now, as adults, we have so many excuses, evidence and reasons for why we should close off our love, why it needs to be conditional, why it's smarter to be conditional why we need all of these boundaries that we become so boundaried up. But the truth is what you want is unconditional love. And that is what everyone else around you wants too. And the the gift of unconditional love is that it is a gift for you in giving that love to others without condition. When you don't need to worry what another person is doing, how they're showing up, how they're behaving, how they're feeling, how, what they're expressing, what their truth is in this moment, what they're thinking, what they're believing, how they're interacting with you. When none of that matters and you just get to love this person no matter what, that is a gift for you. You can drop all of the things your mind is looking for. That's so exhausting. It's confusing and that judging could be used in much better ways. Instead, you just get to meet people as they are, which allows you to see people as you are, including yourself. And of course, you apply this same principle to your relationship with yourself. You are completely lovable just as you are, no matter what you do. And the reality is the more you allow this loving space for yourself and others to step into, actually the more loving and trustworthy people become the majority of the time. We're all operating from this place of the 1% of the time that might happen. There's 1% of people who aren't trustworthy. Well, if people cross your boundaries, if people do things out of fear, You can love them anyway. It doesn't mean you need to keep falling for the same behavior. It doesn't mean you need to keep accepting that in the close proximity of your life, but you can still see it as it is and where it's coming from. It's coming from a place of fear and you can love them and be compassionate in that as well as yourself. When you make mistakes, when you relate in a way that is unconscious or less than what you expect of yourself. From a place of love, you will encourage yourself to raise your standards, to try again. But when you beat yourself up and you separate yourself or others from you, you don't get to learn. You don't get to grow. So conscious relationship is really about doing our best to practice unconditional love, to come back to this place, which is the truth. We are all completely lovable just as we are and and to not control other people, to let go of that desire to control because you trust the universe, you trust the people around you, you trust, and that actually creates more experiences of trust for you. So that's our seventh conscious relationship principle. Conscious relationship principle number eight is about radical responsibility. Conscious relationships require radical responsibility. So responsibility gives you all the power to change what is in your locus of control. When we are not responsible, when we outsource that responsibility to others and we blame other people for the state of our relationships, for our relationship with ourselves, for our, for our experiences, for our beliefs, for our feelings, for our expression, this puts all of the power outside of you into someone else. It means the only way you're able to change how you feel, change the way you think, change what you're experiencing, change your interactions with other people, change the quality of your relationships depends entirely on the other people around you. Now, we are all doing this in some ways or we have at some moment in our life, especially in the context of family, friends and romantic relationships. I bet at some point in your life, you have probably felt, well, if my partner or if my friends or if my families just did X, Y, Z, I would have a better experience of this relationship. 
or if I could only find someone who was able to do these things and not do these other things, I would have a better experience of relationships. If you haven't realized it yet, that doesn't actually work. What does work is taking responsibility for everything you have the power to take responsibility for and change within a relationship. Even when you do decide at some point, listen, the people I'm attracting and the patterns that they're in is actually reflecting a pattern that I'm in and a dynamic that I'm in. And so in order to change that pattern and the dynamic, I need to change the pattern and the dynamic within myself. That then leads me to calling in other people in my life who are not continuing this same dynamic. But if you think you just got to swap out the people, but you change nothing within you and you're not aware of what it is within you that is attracting this behavior, this type of person, this relationship, then you will, no matter who you swap out, you will continue to have that same person showing up just in a different body with a different name over and over and over again. So responsibility is what creates change in our relationships. And it is also the only thing that allows us to experience the kind of relationships we desire. So the more responsibility you can take, the better your relationships will be. Now, even if you think this other person in the relationship is really to blame for whatever it is, if you still ask yourself, well, how am I contributing to this dynamic? And you see, even if it's just a small locus of control and power you have in this dynamic, no matter what you change, even if it's like 1% of the 100% of the issue, that 1% will lead you to a totally different place. There's a really great book called Atomic Habits. I believe the author is James Cleary. If I've got that wrong, I apologize. I'm just thinking of this right now in this moment. And a lot of people love that book. And one of the most powerful examples given in the book for these micro habits that you implement into your life is that If you just shift what you're doing in your life by even 1% or one tiny micro action, the compilation of you doing that specific thing leads you instead of where you were going, which is in this direction, even if we just go 1%, that's going to lead you somewhere completely different. So you can also do a total 360 and go in a total other direction or a 180, or you can do a hundred percent change and you'll go in a completely different direction, but also just 1%, even just 0.1 of a percent will lead you in a different direction. And that is what radical responsibility gives you the power to see where that 1% is or that 0.1% is in every single interaction and relationship that you're experiencing. We can always go deeper in our relationships and the way you actually create better experiences is through this radical responsibility. Now, when you're practicing conscious relationship with another person in whatever area of your life and they are showing up with radical responsibility, you will have incredible relationships because you're both taking responsibility for what you can contribute to the relationship, which means you're cleaning up all of the ick, all of the muck, all of the stuff that is coming from this lower unconscious place that is getting in the way of you both experiencing this space for unconditional love and mirroring of one another. So radical responsibility is one of the key principles of a conscious relationship. And that's what you'll be learning how to embody through moving through this relate higher process and the conscious relationship framework that I'm teaching you here on the podcast. Okay, conscious relationship principle number nine is about collaboration. So conscious relationship allows both you and the other person or people that you are in relationship with to come into a place of collaboration together. Now, if you have an intention and the other person has an intention and you both are aware of what those intentions are in your relationship and you bring both of your creative, responsible, manifesting power and energy together to create those intentions, you become an unstoppable 
force. This is why whenever any of you have experienced the power of a group that is brought together by a specific purpose, what you're able to create together when you commit to that purpose is something that goes beyond what any individual individual could create. And this is why constantly when we talk about businesses and babies and projects, we're talking about the power of working together with other people and as a team, because we can't do it all alone. And when people come together to support a common cause, you then become aware of other possibilities, other ideas that just weren't there to begin with, because it is your consciousness, the other person's consciousness, and whoever else is in the relationship coming together that creates this group consciousness, that creates a collaborative energy that allows a new possibility to be revealed. And so this is the power within every relationship that you're in. And this is why we say that the relationship is a separate entity. You bring your consciousness, the other person brings their consciousness, and then together you have a relationship consciousness which is a collaborative creative energy which will have you creating and embodying your intentions in deeper ways than you could have ever experienced. That's the kind of energy you want in a relationship, one that is creative, one that creates energy, brings energy, collaborates in your life. And this is really the biggest cost of not being in a conscious relationship. So many of you are walking around unconscious in your relationships, feeling drained by your relationships, when the possibility and the opportunity in every single relationship is to have energy created that then goes into every other area of your life. But most people are missing out on this. And in fact, the relationships are draining them. They're feeling unfulfilled or apathetic when you should be creating energy in your relationships. And that's what conscious relationship is all about. Conscious relationship principle number 10 is that a conscious relationship provides you with security. Now, when we feel secure because you and the other person have made a commitment to each other to see out specific intentions, this allows both of you to relax into the container of the relationship. This allows you, therefore, to go deeper into those intentions, knowing that this is the structure holding you, these intentions, knowing that you're both committed, we're both clear on why we're here. And so this allows greater creativity, greater collaboration, greater openness to love, greater openness to the experience. This allows you to feel more seen and heard, to experience love. And this is what we're all desiring. And yet the way we do it is the other way. We say, "Uh uh-uh, I'm not going to commit to anything yet until first I know what the other person wants to do. And so we wait for the other person to show their hand, like in poker, before we will show our hand. So we make all these decisions and actions from a place of being distrustful of the other person, wanting them to prove their love, making love conditional. And then the other person can feel that even if it's just unconscious or energetically, and they respond to that, they close themselves off to love. That also makes them feel insecure. Now, it might be within themselves, or it could be within you, or it could be within your relationship. And a lot of people stay stuck in this insecure way of relating for the rest of their lives, for the rest of the life of the relationship. They think that the problem is with the other person, but the problem is in the dynamic and the environment that you are creating, which lacks structure. It lacks the masculine creative energy that every single project creation, human being needs within them. The structure, the container, what is holding you, that is what commitment is. And commitment, as well as responsibility, is one of the parts of our masculine creative energy that we all have. Every single thing in life needs masculine and feminine creative energy. This is just what it's called and how it's known. It has nothing to do with gender. It's about energy and two different kinds of energy that come together to create. Well, commitment is part of masculine energy and it is essential for security. Now, Also being radically responsible, practicing unconditional love, seeking to understand, allowing truth to be revealed. 
all of this allows another person to feel safe around you, especially radical honesty. When a person knows what they're going to get from the person in front of them, even if they don't necessarily like what they have to say, they feel more secure because they know they're getting truth rather than this closed off pretend to people please, even if it's for what we think is a good purpose. Uh, even if it's we're trying to manipulate someone just because we want them to feel better, people can feel that inauthenticity within you and they don't feel safe and secure. So what we're learning how to do in conscious relationship is create an environment of security. No matter what our attachment style is, I know attachment styles are very hot at the moment, but what I can the, a problem that I'm seeing in attachment styles is that people make them an identity and it actually depends. Some people you interact with will put you in a specific attachment style and others won't. Why? Well, it's about this conscious, secure environment that can be created, which allows both of you to feel secure no matter what your predominant attachment style is. So through this conscious commitment, these intentions we create together, the conscious relationship container that I'm going to teach you, you are able to step into security. Now, when you feel secure, you're able to go deeper into the relationship, deeper into love, deeper into collaboration. And it actually allows you to take more risks, to be more creative, to be more independent in the rest of your life because of the relationship. So, so many people have been sold that we need to be more independent rather than being dependent in any way and definitely not codependent within our relationships. But actually what conscious relationship is teaching you is how to open yourself up to other people and stop being so independent so that you can actually, in the places that need you to be independent, go out and be more independent in those specific areas, but it is because of your openness and your ability to rely on others, to allow people in, to be dependent where that is helpful, that allows you to be more independent in other areas of life. Okay. This brings me to conscious relationship principle number 11, which is all about interdependence. Interdependence is really the ultimate goal rather than independence or dependence of a relationship. Now, the way we get to being interdependent is when we allow ourselves to experience both dependency and also independence. And this is what a conscious relationship is allowing you within this secure, safe environment. You are learning how to allow yourself to rely on another person. You're also allowing yourself to rely more on yourself, which allows you to feel more independent. When you feel witnessed by another person, unconditionally loved by another person, or when you feel witnessed and unconditionally loved by yourself, that allows you to feel safer to rely on yourself and others, as well as to practice independence in the places which you need to practice independence. For instance, in a relationship, you can't both be doing the same thing all of the time. That would be silly. Let's think about this in the context of a business. If I was doing the same thing as every other person in my business, that would be a really inefficient business. However, if I am in my zone of genius, which is perhaps what I'm best at, or perhaps, which is a better way I think to look at your zone of genius, it's what you're really good at and you actually really enjoy. When you're in that place within your relationships and so are the other people in the way that we contribute, in, and sometimes it won't be the thing that lights us up the most or the thing we're the best at, but we don't mind doing it. And we're all contributing in different ways. This allows us to have a, a wider span of what we're actually feeding into the relationship rather than it being tit for tat, or we only get these things because these are the things we're all equally doing. That comes from a place of fear and protection rather than from a place of unconditional love. And it's not sustainable because you and the other people don't want to be contributing in that way. So interdependence is about being both independent and dependent and learning how to have a healthy relationship with both of these. And it supports you then to show up with interdependence where you and the other person can both be yourselves. You can be independent. You can be different people 
And you can also be more interdependent because you show up and are dependent on one another in the ways that matter and also independent in the ways that matter too. Okay, our 12th and final principle for a conscious relationship is that a conscious relationship ultimately helps you and the other person or people in the relationship to elevate your consciousness. And as I mentioned earlier in the episode, that is really one of the primary goals of our lifetime. We are all here to become more conscious, more aware of the truth of life, of living, which is all about love, which is all about abundance, which is all about we all have a right to be here that we are being supported wherever we go. Life supports us. The universe supports us. Other people support us. We can open to life. We can open to love because all of the fear, all of the concern, all of the worries, everything that comes from that fear place is an illusion. It is conditioning. It's not true. It's not really there. And so you're responding from this made up place rather than allowing yourself to experience what is possible in this life and see all of the possibilities around you. Conscious relationship supports you to increase your consciousness, which allows you a better experience of love across your relationships as well as throughout your life. Okay, my beautiful friends, so they are the 12 conscious relationship principles. I hope you've enjoyed learning how conscious relationships support your relationships and your life as a whole, and also what these 12 principles are so that you can start choosing one maybe once a month to pick, to embody, to ponder, to meditate on, to practice, and you will see how these will support your relationships to transform. I'll see you in our next episode. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to Relate Higher, your go-to resource for learning how to consciously approach all of your relationships. To deepen your learning and practice, make sure you're subscribed to receive the Relate Higher community newsletter. This is a weekly newsletter sent to you every Monday, providing further coaching and education to support your relationships. Subscribe at relatehigher.com forward slash community. And if you haven't yet left a five-star review for the podcast, we ask that you please do that now so that this podcast can reach other listeners who also want to learn and practice conscious higher relating. Because remember, the more people who learn, the better relationships we all enjoy. Thank you.